is something I've been wanting to do for some time now. Well, not really. Hello and welcome to... No, I didn't want to play Toho. Hello and welcome to... Hello and welcome to Binary Hearts. Ah, oh, god dang it. <laughs> Wah. Are there any other distractions left? So... I had this idea once, and I just wanted to go with it. I wanted to record myself just reading out loud. Now, originally I was gonna read some fanfiction or something, or maybe an original story from DeviantArt, something really cheesy and something that'll be really funny. Because that'll fit, pit, fit well with my high-pitched teenage man voice. But I decided I'd play a visual novel instead. So as you can see, this, this thing is really old. So uh, lower your expectations. This is a free game. And it was made in the Flash game era. In fact, I'm pretty sure this is a Flash game. This was a Flash game. Uh, and I just so happen to be playing. Hmm? Wow, am I really speaking that loudly? Anyway, as I was saying, lower your expectations. Because this is probably one of those old Flash games, and I just so happen to have a downloaded ver version. I have made a terrible decision of playing this late at night. Oh, you can't see it, but it's late at night. <laughs> what the hell? Joystick? You can play the game with a controller, that's amazing. Let's just get this over with. Darkness. Silence. Total emptiness. These were the only things I could remember. Then, a light. A faint flicker. Almost invisible. My memory slowly began returning. Yet, I was confused. Where was I? How did I end up here? The light grew bit brighter, more intense. I realized that it was my own eye slowly opening. Hiss. Uh. Hiss. Like a snake. A sound. Somebody was calling my name. Was I imagining things? No. I definitely heard it. Huh. Huh? I was breathing hard. It was raining. And right across me, Something was gleaming brightly. Good grammar so far. A knife that looks more like a sword actually. And the person holding it was none other than was none other than my best friend, Jarl. Yes, of course. Everything was coming back to me now. What's wrong, Frey? Is that all you've got? Jarl approached me with incredible speed, and then swish. He took a swipe at my neck. I managed to step back just in time to avoid getting my throat slit. Suddenly, a beam of pure energy shot Gerald from the side, causing him to fall to his knees. Are you alright, Frey? It was Leah. Yes, of course. She was the reason that I was here right now. The reason that Gerald was attacking me. Why, Gerald? Why did it have to turn out like this? All my life, I have lived within the cold, unmoving, reinforced steel walls of the Academy. Uh, missed, missed a quotation there. Never knowing any place other than this, I was taught all that I would ever need to learn there. Or so I thought. Martial arts, weapons training, security systems cracking, and most of all, how to control my powers. 
these innate powers that allowed me to create force fields, levitate objects, and even channel my thoughts into a stream of energy at will. The Academy. They search for people like myself and teach them how to properly utilize their powers. For what reason? I will forever remain beyond my level of security. At first, there is only me. Then one day, they introduced me to a silver-haired boy with mournful eyes. This was Gerald. We were the same age, but Gerald was always like an older brother to me. He came from the outside, which I had never seen and was filled with wisdom and experience that I could only dream of. During training, I could never beat him no matter how hard I tried, but I was fine with that. Gerald often told me the stories of his adventures when he was still outside and how much he hated it. They were stories of suffering, of discrimination, and hatred. How he was looked upon as a monster merely because of his abilities. And it came to hate the outside, which I had never seen just as he did. Thus, we grew up relatively happy, together inside the confines of the academy. Probably should have gotten myself a mic now that I think about it. We promised each other never to try to escape. Hello, excuse me, how do I save? Yet, this was a promise that I could never have kept, especially when she arrived. Time passed quickly inside the unchanging academy. Each repetitive day was just like all the rest. I was already 15 when I saw her. When I first saw her. That girl, Leah. Long, straight, dark brown hair, full red lips, and an icy blue eyes. I was infatuated with her at first glance. Is that really the correct word? Gerald, on the other hand, seemed unimpressed and warned me not to get too close to her. Leah was a power user just like us. The Academy scientist informed us that she had come from the outside, just like Gerald. As the days of our training passed, I noticed that she would always walk off alone to an isolated corner, with a transparent ceiling, our only window to the outside. Shit. Wow, this is a really janky version of Ranpai. But I couldn't just leave her alone, so I decided to follow her. As I slowly approached Leah, I noticed that she had tears in her eyes. She was crying? The scene perplexed me to no end, but I pretty much left it alone. One day, however, Curiosity got the better of me, and I confronted her about this. Of course, she was surprised. She never thought that someone had noticed her doing this, but she told the reason for her tears anyway. She wanted to leave this place, to go back outside. For someone like me, this idea was totally preposterous. Why travel to the uncertain, unstable, and cruel outside world when you could live inside this unchanging virtual utopia? I held back the urge to laugh at her, but I stopped when I saw the look in her eyes. Pray. She began to speak, hesitantly at first, but she continued when she saw that I was listening. Yes, it's true. The outside can be cruel. It was sometimes sad, painful, uncertain, Leah said. But, even so, I was always trying my best, walking on my own two feet unrestrained by this artificial sense of security that we have at the academy. And that's when I felt the happiest. I didn't really understand what she was trying to tell me, but I was intrigued, so from that day on, I would always meet Leon the very same spot and ask her to tell more about the outside that she adores so much. I was fascinated by her stories, and by her. Slowly, 
I could tell that she was getting used to the monotony of life inside the academy. Yet, this situation wasn't meant to last. It was after training. I hadn't seen Leah nor Gerald all day. Later, I saw both of them being led by armed guards outside a room that was mostly used for experiments by the academy's scientists. When they saw me, Gerald could only nod in silence and Leah rushed to hug me and began crying uncontrollably. She never said a word. She never needed to. I didn't really understand what happened, but Leah's tears spoke a language of their own. She didn't belong in that place. She never did. And I knew that I had to get her out of there, by any means possible. But, at the mere sight of her tears, a strange compulsion began to take over me. Voices started whispering to me in my head, telling me to get angry, and even angrier, and then everyone went black. <laughs> Insert sound effects. Do you like my sound effects? Machine gun sound effects. <laughs> I have no idea what that's supposed to sound. I have no idea what that is. Spock. When I awakened, I found myself in a place I had never seen before. Lush green grasses that I had only seen virtually through videos and images surrounded me. The sky was as wide as the eye could see, and Leah was by my side, her face and dress covered in blood. Yet, somehow, we had managed to escape the academy. Frey! Leah spoke. She finally broke the silence. Let's run away to get together. I'll show you the cruel world that you've never seen. Perhaps it was the wrong decision, but back then, it felt like the best choice that I would ever take, make in my entire life. Yes, show me, Leah. And so... We ran, and ran even further, wherever our legs would take us, without purpose, without a destination, but I could care less. Leah was by my side, and we were free. Leah taught me about the ways of the outside. Excuse me. <sighs> oh, burp. I'm sorry, excuse me. Although I knew in theory how to act among normal people, the real thing felt very different. It was hard at first. We'd often argue and fight over pointless and trivial things. <laughs> uh, politics? <laughs> Yet, just as she said, we were trying our best, and it was a feeling that I'd always cherish. She also told me that she was forcibly separated from her parents, and she felt sure that they were still alive somewhere. If possible, she wanted to meet them again. And what if Gerald, in abandoning the academy, did I also abandon our friendship? I didn't believe this at all. This was my only regret in escaping from the academy. That we couldn't have bought Jared with us. We reached a rather large urbanized city. Skyscrapers and towering commercial buildings were everywhere. The busy residents, rushing to get a good position in the rat race of everyday life, looked like ants from a distance in their office and business suits. Finding Leah's parents, however, was a problem that would have to wait another time. For now, we had a more urgent concern. Our escape happened almost spontaneously. The details were still unclear to me even at this point. So, we had nothing but the clothes we were wearing, no money, no food, no nothing. Leah was staring at me questioningly. Something wrong, Frey? Uh, no, it's nothing. Ah. Her face suddenly lit up. Wait a sec. She told me before w w walking up to a middle-aged gentleman in a power suit. She struck a conversation, which I tried to listen to by moving closer, but she gave me an annoyed look and signaled me to keep my distance. Hmm. <laughs> Fine then. Soon, however, she started walking away and disappeared into a dark corner. 
between what looked like two huge run-down apartment buildings with the stranger following behind her. I'd have gone after them, but she was still motioning me to stay put. Actually, I was thinking of staying where I was, but in the end I decided to go after- Oh great, my choice didn't matter there. I decided to go after them anyway. I was about to approach the shady corner when I heard a distinctly female voice crying for help. Help! I've been robbed! Great. What I saw next was easy to figure out. A pretty young maiden crying for help and two gruff looking thugs and the tall slender one running in the opposite direction. The skinny one was carrying what was obviously her handbag. I decided to help her. Chasing after the three goons was a simple matter since they couldn't really run that fast. Outrunning someone with my level of physical training was impossible. Fearlessly, I leapt out in front of them. Well then, gentlemen, I believe that you should return what doesn't belong to you. Now that I think about it, that line sounded absolutely pathetic. Besides, rescuing damsels in distress is a pastime for medieval knights, not, an acad not a recent academy escapee. Swoosh. Whoops, good thing he missed me by hairline. I should really pay attention to what I'm doing. It would have been pretty embarrassing for the hero to suddenly get stabbed to death by some random street thug. <laughs> it seems that my adversaries were armed. Not much, really. Just a bunch of cheap knives. Still, I was unarmed. And outnumbered. Plus, I couldn't even use my powers with these many people around. I'd have to rely on skill. Swish. Whoosh. Actually, all three of them had already been hacking away at me for some time, but calculating and effortlessly dodging the angle and trajectory of the attacks of three untrained blade users were like playing level one of some random curtain fire video game to someone like me. Oh my god, he plays bullet hell games! <laughs> Mister, you are freaking slow. I kicked the ugliest looking of the three ferociously in the gut. He crumpled to the ground helplessly, probably with more than a few broken ribs. Zing! <laughs> Tack! I, I really love the sound effects. <laughs> er, the sound, the description of the sound effects, the word that they use for sound effects. <laughs> I used the handbag that I had just stolen from the second thug to my left as a shield. Hopefully there are no valuables in this one. Whoops, shouldn't you be keeping an eye out on your stolen goods? The guy's attention shifted to his right hand for a split second, more than enough time for me to take him out. I need his jaw shut. Now then, time for the last one. Ugh. The tall one was pretty sneaky, he almost got me. From behind, I felt the knife rip through my thin shirt and almost pierced my back. I shifted my body at the last moment and used his own momentum to drive him face first into the pavement. Huh. <sighs> That's that, I guess. Taking the handbag with me, I left the three unconscious felons for whatever the city had in store for them and approached the attractive-looking young woman who had been watching all this time. A small crowd had gathered. Not that I blamed them. After all, a robbery followed by a three-on-one street fight surely doesn't happen very often. The young woman had medium-length purplish hair, and judging by her appearance, looked to be an office worker of some kind in her twenties. Your bag? She smiled mischievously at me for some reason. Oh no, what if the thugs were actually the good guys and the girl was actually the thief all this time? Thanks. You're pretty strong. Oh, that? Well, I work out. A lot. I play Toho on Lunatic Difficulty. Daily. You should totally watch me do it sometime. You'll be impressed by all of my micro-dodging RNG bullshit that I can handle. <laughs> Every single day, to be exact. Oh. <laughs> I see. Hmm, I think I could use someone like you. Are you hiring us? 
Huh? What? You mean like a job? My thoughts exactly, Frey. A job proposal. Shouldn't this girl have been a little bit more traumatized by the incident? Or even just gaping in awe at my mad skills? Ah well, to each his own. You narcissistic bastard. You are trying to flex on her. Yep, here's my calling card. Call me anytime if you're interested. I'll let you know the details then. Then she left in a hurry without uttering another word. I just couldn't fathom that look on her face, however. Getting a job might not be a bad idea if we plan to stay in this place for some time. I'd have to consult Leah later. Finding a phone would be a bit of a problem too, considering we didn't even have a place to stay. Or an ID. Or your or your legal documents or anything really probably leah probably maybe she already belonged here but frey nah <laughs> maybe i should have asked that lady for a reward or something let's see now i examined the calling card all contained was her name and, and phone number no business card no business address description nothing me Ray Vice, number nine three 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 four 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 seven 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 seven. This might still come in handy sometime. I turned to the same spot where Leah left me. She wasn't back yet, or maybe she got tired of waiting and left me behind. Yeah, right. And then what? Away from the academy, all we had left in this world was each other. About thirty more minutes passed before Leah finally returned. She was wearing different clothes, which I had no idea where she got and was holding what looked like a very f full leather wallet. Huh? But how did you... What do you think? She winked and smiled coyly at me. Um, never mind. My guess didn't seem worth mentioning any and anyway. That solves her money problem temporarily. Did she rob? And after we were done being a hero, here we are about to get our reputation ruined instantly. For having a friend that robs. She pouted slightly. So be it then. Shall we go? She has a different cloth here, but her bust is still using the same thing. I nodded in reply and allowed her to lead away. This was a different side of Leah that I had never seen before. I was just happy that she trusted me that much at least. Come on, let's go, let's go. Leah grabbed me by the arm and literally dragged me away from the handheld video game on display that I had been tinkering with. It's been three days since we left the academy now. For the time being, we had no more money. Or, we had more money than we knew what to do with, and we were staying at the local five-star hotel. Now I just needed some new clothes since my uniform stands out too much and could attract some unwanted attention. Leah dragged me from one brand named store to another, deciding by herself each time that the clothes on display didn't suit me. I had just bought about enough of this, so I casually walked past the bargain section of the next store. She dragged me into and grabbed a dark blue shirt and a pair of jeans that were about my size. Huh? Is that it? She seemed disappointed, but didn't make me put them back. Yeah, these are fine. Tsk, so be it then. You're no fun, Frey. She took the items from me and went up to the counter to pay for them. It seems that the young male clerk with a hairdo that I could only describe as line cut was in a rather cute mood. Are these for you, baby? They won't fit, you know. She smiled provocatively at him. What do you think? If that clerk had known better, he would have probably stopped right there. But he didn't. and actually seemed encouraged. There's something familiar about that voice of his. I think you need a real man, honey. He moved his head so close to hers that he was practically breathing down her face. Ah, I see. Is that what you think? So be it then. Kick him. Crunch. Yep. <laughs> the sound of human bones breaking reverberated through the entire outside, through the entire store, and could even be heard on the streets outside. This was quickly followed by two frantic figures in a beeline to the opposite direction leaving behind a very unconscious clerk. This is almost robbery, you know. Though I pretended to scold her, I was actually enjoying this. She grinned at me, still holding the loot, my new shirt and jeans that we should have paid for. 
we can still pay for them, you know. Aw, did that shatter your illusions about me? I'm a strong, independent woman, bitch. <laughs> I stopped running. There's a slight pause before my reply. The Leah from the Academy and the Leah right now are two entirely different persons, but also two equally important persons in my life. People? I don't know. She pondered my words for a bit, then with a half smile and half pout, told me bluntly, Don't push it, Frey. Philosophy really doesn't suit you. <laughs> that left me feeling a bit confused as to what I actually meant to her. This was certainly a different Leah from this shy, innocent, seemingly fragile girl that I knew, or thought I knew, at the Academy. Yet, I found myself getting more and more intrigued by this side of her. Although I didn't let on the voices that I heard back when we escaped had been hounding me for some time now. They never actually stopped with their little whispers. The voices just seemed to reset, recede, and I was getting used to them by now. And also, with Leah by my side, I felt totally unstoppable. Whatever these voices were, I wouldn't lose to them. Oh my god, that's so loud! I'll take it, Frey. Dude, I, just, just when I was getting used to me being the one making all the sound effects, had to do that to me. I think I'll end this here. This is a perfect cliffhanger, if any. Uh, hope you're enjoying this. <laughs> I quite enjoy this. Reading out loud is kind of fun. If anything, it just it just reminds me a lot that I prefer reading on my own and silently. Like I'm so much slower than the, at at this. <laughs> uh, what do I think? Well, the graphics kind of suck balls. Like. I don't I don't like what they're doing with how they show the show the background. Also, has my mouse been there? Oh my god, I'm so sorry. But yeah, I don't like the resolution. Uh the CGs actually show them in the full square, but dude, if they're going to be widescreen like this, then why did you use a square resolution, a 4x3 resolution? Rather than the normal 16 by 9 aspect ratio that most people would use. So far though, the story has been mm, bland. Generic sci-fi shit. But I'll see where it goes. Because I'm quite enjoying this. Besides, it's free anyway. <laughs> so... Yeah. I'll probably not make a part 2 of this. Considering if you've seen how I pl how I do these, I rarely ever actually continue my series because I get bored of them immediately and just stop. But who knows? Maybe this might be different. So later. <laughs>